the other ones is the staff the rest of the season. So we're going to try to do that. And then we're not school Well, you're on, are you on Wi-Fi? No. Oh, I mean, you're on that. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 the, I mean, the, this is also up to DC down there. But, oh, wait a minute. We're okay. Uh, um, yeah, give him a call. Give him a ring. No, it's just started. Oh, great. I mean, we should be. <laughs> yeah, give him a shout. I don't know. Saying unable to connect to Twitter, I could hear you guys in the lobby. That's pretty sad. Is this streaming on our lobby? That I don't know. But it's not weird. It's like a weird You can hear it. Do you hear me hit the mic? <laughs> Okay. Okay. 
So I can just save it. Okay. 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 So I'll be able to access that somewhere. Okay. I didn't know. It was, I didn't know it was doing that. Yeah, we can go ahead and yeah. see it. Yeah. So, you could hear this in the echoes and everything. So, it doesn't. Well, the the mic is set up to some lobby, not on the mezzanine. W L and then round like the table R O U N D 
and then I will ask us a few questions and she will answer them. Okay, so we're going to, do you have your timer? I do, I have mine. It's all ready. It's all ready.
I don't think. I don't think it's something like that.
from the chat to the outline. They have lots to say. I don't want to get stuck. I love to talk to them, but I lose a sense of urgency. The play seems far away. How do I set boundaries? <laughs> that last one was like, how do I set, how do you set boundaries? That's like, and we've already established that, like, whether or not she is the first lady, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> she's tweaking to us. She's getting up from Florida. We could say we could start a really interesting rumor. Um, you know, she ends up having issues with her character. 
<laughs> um, but anyway, we're, we're just, we're, I know, we, make, we keep making that joke, but, because we have to laugh uh, about it. But uh, so, okay, this is the thing. So, so we talked to Melania last week and the week before about making an outline and talking to her character. And so she's made an outline, good for you, because they're not easy to do. And now you're like, I need to start writing questions? No, she's, she's trying to figure out when you stop the conversation with her characters and move to the outline. Oh, she has, you haven't done have the outline. Oh, yeah. Okay, well now, stop now. Stop now. This is good. That's a good question. Stop now, because you, you, know, you can talk to them for so long, but suddenly you're like, okay, so what's the story? So ask them, what's the story? What are you doing? Right? And a lot of times you say, where are you now, and where do you want to be by the end of this? And you can just make things up, like, okay, the first thing is they're in a diner, and at the end of the movie or at the end of the play, they're getting in a car, and they're going to drive to, you know, San Francisco. Okay? And so you start saying, what's your story? What story are you here uh, to tell me? Or what story would you like me to tell with you? Okay? Um, and it is tricky because suddenly, because in the beginning, if talking to your characters is hard, then you want to stay in, once it gets easier, you want to stay in that place. And then it's hard to move on to the next stage, which is, in this case, writing an outline. So, oh, I said writing an outline is hard. Actually, writing an outline kind of isn't hard. It's like a first draft. Um, does anybody like outline? She is not really saying she is. You like outline. You like I have a general structure and then I can, I don't, I don't really get scene by scene. Right. But I can at least have the directions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do a scene by scene. But you can have a general direction. Tent poles, as we say. You know, those of us who are in the circus. <laughs> we say, you get some good tent poles and you know, so you're not just kind of like lost, you know. But some people don't even like that. Some people are like, I just want to be free. Sorry, I just thought of a horrible Yeah, so just imagine if you were like a slave in Georgia and you just wanted to be free and you just took off running. Good, good, good. But you know, it's better if you have a plan. You have a plan? You have a plan? way. I think, you know, you have a better chance. So that's what we do. We just give our people a little bit of a I'm going to follow a star. Now, I'm going to follow the stars. I'm going to follow that star. Because I heard that that one works. So that's what we do. We just do that. That's like going out on It worked for them. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. But anyway, so I, I like Alan. Yes? Yes. Um, I, I'm working on a whole bunch of projects right now. Yes. What's your advice about toggling back and forth between different kinds of projects? I'm working on a novel, I have an essay, I have some TV and film projects, and I'm kind of like, ah. yeah. I know. So do, are you are you the artful dodge? Do you like dodge? So you say, how's that project going? You're like, it's going great. You know? Yeah. How do you do? You have separate days to work on your projects. Right now, I'm on deadline, and almost doing two weeks. So it's all doing two weeks. Yeah. Everything is due in two weeks? Total. How did that happen? I've been working on it for six years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been working on everything for six years? The novel. The novel. So just the novel's due in two weeks? Yeah. Okay, but not the TV show and not the... The essay's essay. due tomorrow. The essay's due tomorrow. Okay. So it's, it's easy though. It's easy. So two weeks is what? Like 14 days. Okay. <laughs> 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 see, see how fun it is? It's like, yeah, I know that. Good. Okay. 14 days. Okay. So, uh, and tomorrow is 24 hours. Okay. So the, the essay is the priority, right? After you get the essay done, you're going to focus exclusively on the novel. So you're, you have deadlines to help you focus. Deadlines to help you create a list of priorities, right? And you also have the art of like, I don't know, you don't look like a bullshitter, but you the art of like, like someone texted me, hey, are you coming to rehearsal at noon? I am again, here we go. Sure, 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 I'll text them in a minute. Okay, so you don't have to, t today, between today and tomorrow, you work on the essay. Then just focus on your novel for two weeks. Then turn your attention to the other project. Right? And use the system of deadlines, which you're very good at, to create your list of priorities, okay? So what I do is I tend to work on 
maybe one thing on one day and another thing on another day and another thing on another day. I tend to do that. Or I work like, three days on one thing and then I switch to another thing. And then I might have to go to rehearsal for another thing. And then I come back and I work on the other thing. <coughs> And I, all, I try to be up front with people like, oh, I can't get to that right now. I have a friend who says, under promise, over deliver. Okay? So tell people, if you think it's going to take you two weeks, tell people it's going to take you four. And then if it takes you three weeks, everybody's happy. Right? And, and say hooray as much as possible because it's wonderful. What a blessing to have a lot of projects and a lot of people who want to work with you. Right? It's a good thing, even though it's like, it seems like I'm losing sleep, but it's like, right? It's a good thing when people want to work with you. It's a real blessing. So it's a, just remind yourself, sometimes we get very tired. And like, oh, I'm so tired. I've got so much work to do, but it's a really wonderful thing. Thank you. Thanks a good question. Anybody else? Yes, we have another one from Stacy Rose. She oh. says, how do I... How do I slay the beast of career anxiety? It's not useful at all. Slay the beast of career anxiety. Um, like, how will I ever make a living at this kind of thing? Is that what she's talking about? Somebody translate that. Is that with career anxiety? Is that what that means? Should we assume that that should be this horrible? Right? I know Stacy Rose. I know Stacy Rose. I'm like, hi. Oh, slay the beast of career anxiety. Um, okay, yeah. I was like, Stacy Rose, we know her. We know you, Stacy Rose. Hi. Um, and knowing you, Stacy, you have really, you ought not to worry because you're so talented and wonderful and hardworking. So that's a good thing. Um, I know Stacy. Stacy does all the work and she works really hard. She's very talented. So those things are an issue. If you're not doing the work, then that's an issue, but that's not her problem. Um, I think maybe instead of slaying the beast, what if you make friends with the beast? Remember Shrek? Yeah. It's called great letters from Shrek. <laughs> no, 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 the part, you know, the dragon, you know, was, and the, and the you know, uh, Shrek 1, I don't think I watched the other ones, but Shrek, you know, the evil, ah, and then they found that the dragon was really in love with the donkey or something, right? Isn't that how it went? Like, and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. and the dragon's like, oh, man, you know, so, we didn't have to worry about slaying the dragon. We had to worry about making friends with the dragon. <coughs> so just make it, uh, have fun with it. You know, when you have to do things like make a deadline, have a good time with it. Try to count your blessings as much as possible. I wouldn't kill that dragon. I wouldn't slay it. We're, uh, you know what I mean? I would, I would sort of uh, use it, ride it. You know, harness it. You know? Jump on its back and go for a beautiful ride, because that's the thing that's going to power you through your whole life. So I wouldn't slay it. I would befriend it and get excited about this journey that you're on that involves work, working by yourself, you know, and at your desk and all that kind of stuff. And it also involves going to cocktail parties and making deadlines and trying to get prizes and trying to get, you know, gigs and stuff. So just have a good time with it. I would say, and come back in because we miss you. And I hope your jobs are going well. She was like a drama, drama league fellow or some shit. But what's she doing? She's still fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Huh? Anybody else? Yes. I was wondering when you when you working on a period piece. Yes. Yeah. Is it is it more difficult to convey the urgency of that period to the audience or? or or do you find that you get a lot, you see the different things from the period that you get a lot more inspiration sometimes? Right. I just wonder. Yeah, did everybody hear, what's your name? Barbara. Barbara. Did everybody hear Barbara's, what was when you were writing a period piece, something, uh, an historical piece, right? How do we best, how do you effectively convey the urgency okay. of the time? Huh. Right, 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 right. Um, and a lot of people, after your show, your movie, or whatever, the, is it a novel or a play? It's a play. So after it's been produced and everything, you'll get interviews, and the interviews will go like this. Probably always the first question. Why now? Why now? Why are you writing it now? Like that. That's like the best of your question. And you go like, well, and then you come up with the answer. Um, but you probably already have the answer because the urgency of the time period the historical era 
is the same urgency as now. Which is probably why you want to write it. One thing we get by writing period pieces is we get perspective. So, I mean, everything, and I've written a lot, of, I know history is very fashionable right now. I spent years writing historical stuff that takes place in the 1800s, 1700s, and um, it's always because I'm interested in something now that I can only see or I can see best by looking backwards. The same reason people write science fiction. Okay, same thing. So, think of the earth, think of why do I want to write this? What moves me about these characters, for example? And answer those questions for yourself, and that's how you'll communicate the urgency. You know? Because it's not just, oh, look, they have pretty clothes. I mean, although that's a good reason to write period pieces, because the clothes are awesome um, for some people. <laughs> but, but, you know, why now? Why do I want to write this now? What interests me about these people? You know, what moves me now? And that's because their urgencies are, are our urgencies. We think about, you know. Thanks, Maya. Thank you. 
but that's it's, but it's really helpful. So you got to put on that outfit, you know, you got to put the work in, and kind of half of you don't sweat it, and make sure it's as good as you can do right here. Make sure the right is as good as it can be, right? And the other half of you, with like your third eye, start scanning and looking around for where might this find a home. It's like your your or your fourth eye. You know what I mean? So you keep like, I, if, it, if you feel like it's a musical piece, maybe, you know, uh, then you might start to go into musicals or watch musicals online, kind of sort of thing, you know? Um, if you feel like it's a regular play, then you might start seeing more plays than you used to. If you feel like it's a novel, maybe you start looking to see who the publishers are or maybe try to contact people who might be interested in looking at work. And you, you keep that going in addition to doing your work, okay? And you, again, you don't, you just keep doing the work. I think that's the most important thing. It's really, it's really tricky. I have a band, and for a long time we played and played and played, and I was like, we don't have a venue or anything. We're not working on getting gigs. We're just playing. You know, we're just like getting together and rehearsing. You know, and then came the time we said, shit, shouldn't we get a gig? Shouldn't we find some, some place to play? I mean, we could play forever in my living room. Um, and then that became an extra part of it, but we had to do the work first, which you're doing. Um, and the gigs, uh, they say you build it, they will, you know that horrible field of dreams saying, if you build it, they will come. But it's kind of true in a kind of weird way, you know? Put the time in, the people are going to start to show up. Maybe in a small way at first, you know, maybe a couple of people will be able to do a good play or something like that. And you know, but they'll, they'll show up if you keep up the time. That's what, that's what I keep finding among my students and everything. That's what we discover. So. That's a good question. Sorry about the noise. Thank you. It's like people are like, ah, oh, we're working. We're down here making the snacks. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of work. And we do really get ready for work. Right. Is that 
because you need to start showing your work and sharing it with actors or producers sure. or whatever to move on to the next step. Right. That sometimes people, especially if you're a woman, see you as a target. Like that. Yeah. It's it's the the right, right, right. You know, uh, there's that woman, um, Dan, what's her name? Maxine. What's her name? What's her name? Maxine What did she say? I am a, I am a strong black woman. I, am, I cannot be intimidated. You can say that even if you're a dude, man. You can have to say I'm a strong black woman. You want to say that. But here I am, and I cannot be intimidated. I mean, just saying that. You know, I cannot be, you know, I, I will be heard. So things like, you can, you know, but on a, we have our work, we, we write, we do a draft, we do the work, we bring it to people, we want to have a workshop to get to the next level, and we don't want to be, you know, used as a punching bag, yeah. right? Or a, like, venting area, a vomitorium for people's opinions that don't even, aren't even appropriate to what we're trying to do. And I would say, be, uh, do a lot of work on your own or with people you trust, Right? Don't be in such a hurry to get out there and show it around. Do the work at home, right, on your own. And then show it very slowly. And show it to people who love you more than they love the idea of seeing their ideas in your work. So go very gently and slowly in the process. Right? And, um, and shit's gonna fly. Shit does. You know what I mean? But if you're solid in your work, if you've done the work at home on your, your play, for example, then you can feel more confident about your play. And if you get some stupid notes, and even great, smart, brilliant producers give stupid notes, you know, it's not a crime, it's just what happens. Try not to take it like an indictment of your personhood and just look at it as, oh, maybe my play needs work, you know? Or more than that, I meant like Oh, like stealing. Yeah. Or. Oh, gee. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can I mean, cop. Yeah, you, know, you can cop copy the copy right. Yeah. Right. That's oh that but that's a big yeah that's really 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 important to copyright your work. Um, and to if you have a, a an, an agent you know send it to them first or if you have a friend or co or just copyright your work you can do that without having an agent or a friend actually. You can just do it on your own, you know, and then it's uh, it's yours. It's very clearly your, it, yours, it belongs to you. You don't have to, you know, send it out to a million people when you send it out. Send it out to a couple of people at a time. Hard copies are also good if you're concerned about that, you know? Yeah. Did you have a I was just going to weigh in that um, producers and other people weighing in on your work is not limited oh, yeah. to women. Yeah. Sure. There's plenty of there's plenty of dumb comments for everybody. Actually. You know, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and it does. And just and also just because the producer gives you a dumb comment doesn't mean they're horrible. It doesn't mean that they're you know. But there is a. I mean, and and while while you are correct, there is also we have to acknowledge. Let's take the the moment to acknowledge that the playing field is not even. The playing field isn't even. And there are people in this world. And we who live in the, a first world country can appreciate this also, all of us here. There are people in this world who have it harder than other people. Some people have it harder than other people. Some people work twice as hard for half as much. That's reality. And we're not trying to make, you know, no one's trying to guilt anybody or whatever. We just have to acknowledge that. And if we acknowledge that, like in a good therapy session, then we can move forward. <laughs> <laughs> we should all go to therapy. That's what we should do. Make America go to therapy. It's all like, oh, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> or great. Anyway. So, yeah. But you're right, there's plenty of stupid comments for lots of people um, out there. We have just a few more minutes. We have under four minutes. Anybody want to go over? Do you, do you have a, a strategy for if you get a comment that you think might be stupid, yeah. but you're not sure. Right, right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. For I mean, yeah. do you do? What do you do in the moment right after you hear it? Oh, well, like so, it's coming out of the producer's mouth yeah. and coming toward me. 
Um, so, I mean, you in the moment, uh, in my ex experience, and this is again born of the fact that I am a woman of African descent. So I gotta do a different kind of jujitsu than maybe you were allowed to do. I don't know, but I'm just saying, right? Because if I get all like black up in there, I am certainly not gonna get hired for the next job. Like, no way. I mean, I've heard I had an agent years ago, a white guy, fabulous agent, who used to throw things in meetings. And everyone's like, oh yeah, he's such a cool dude. He throws shit when he gets mad. If I throw stuff in a meeting, I will not think about you guys. They'll like lock me up, you know. In what you would be. But so what I have learned to do is I just say, wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I write it down in my notebook. And that's what I do. Wow. And I go home and I'm like, <laughs> 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 I wouldn't be back. You know what I mean? So I would say write the notes down in your notebook. I say don't like vomit back the note at the producer. Unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be combative. Whoever we are. We don't, I mean, I think there's better use of our energy. You don't need to be combative. So write the note down and then sleep on it. And you never know. Some notes that sound stupid initially are have a grain of good idea in them. And some notes that sound great, you know, when you try them out, don't work. So sleep on all the notes. And I'd say don't vomit back into the producer's face. Unless you're like, I don't know, one of those, like Aaron Sorkin. I can't see him. But he doesn't, he's not aware that there's not even playing here. So there's a whole. There it is? That's all right. He's like, you know, he's woke now, right? I'm sorry, I'm calling everybody up. <laughs> I mean, we have a few minutes. Do you mind having more like, burning questions? Did everybody see that when, when the, the 45th went to, he made the speech to sign the executive orders and then he left the room? And that was on April Fool. I was like, ah, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, that made me really laugh. Anybody else? Are we good? We're done? Everybody good? Well, next week we're going to be here, yes? Okay. Thank you, Maya. Thanks, Avery, behind the camera. Thanks, you guys. Watch the work. Thank you.